Hey friends, thanks for joining me again for another tarot video. Um, I've been called to make a video this week um, just to talk about the energies of what's going on in April because it's a very interesting month and I thought we should talk about it. Um, it's been helping me navigate sort of what's going on in my life um, as well as some people that I know and love who, who come to me for readings. So thank you guys for booking me for readings. Um, I will keep myself available to do readings um, to you all until I decide that that's no longer a thing. But for now, uh, it is a thing. So hit me up in the DMs or message me on social media um, or however you can reach me through YouTube is totally fine. Uh, what else do I want to say? Um, yeah, so the last new moon video was a little bit longer than the daily ones I used to do. Let me know, was that too long? Did you like the length of it? Did you, what did you get out of it? Did you feel like you got out of it? Um, the kind of information that was 45 minutes worth and you would like to do that again. I don't know how long this one will be at the time of this recording. I'm just sort of going with the flow. And that is the message of this week. Let's go with the flow. Look, we're coming out of a week, um where Mars and Saturn went conjunct. When two planets go conjunct, they sort of pass each other in the sky and um, slightly trigger each other. Or as in just sort of, their energies sort of blend. Um, however, Mars and Saturn are a little bit contradictory in my opinion, because Mars is everything that drives us forward. It's our ambition, it's Aries. Aries rules Mars, or Mars rules Aries, however you want to look at it. And so, yeah, it's springtime, right? It's time for spring cleaning. I've cleaned my space. I don't know if you can tell we're like going more minimalistic here now. It's time for cleaning out the closet, cleaning out space, getting stuff out in the open, releasing frustration. If you're not working on releasing things right now, you're not doing it right. Because part of it is also Mars and Saturn. Saturn creates restriction. Mars wants us to move forward. Conjunct energy is also like Mars extra. So let me know if you've experienced this, where it's like you're wanting to make progress on something and maybe you're embodying some of that Aries ball of fire energy where you're sort of like almost, will I say, willing to do whatever it takes to push something forward to no avail. Like there's nothing else you can do to make something happen. Saturn is just so sh coming, showing up here as like a, a bit of a mirror and a lesson of like what is yet to be integrated into your life. So it might have been a challenging week, right? I mean, at the time of this recording, it's um, just before the weekend, but I'm going to post this at the top of the next week. So when I'm saying when I'm saying next last week, I'm talking about the week of um, April five through ten or whatever. Uh, what else is happening? Um, at the end of this week, there's the full moon in Libra. So there is things coming into balance and into harmony, but not without a whole lot of emotion, right? There is like some kind of tenderness and like this release that needs to happen for balance to um, occur, for that harmony to occur. And the way to that is only through release, releasing control, releasing frustration. The full moon comes and it says, tells us that we have to be okay with where we are at any given point. That's also a form of release, right? So, <clears throat> in our attempts to spring clean, to remove things that no longer serve us, to make progress, to shed weight, the weight of things, um, in order to move forward, what have we forgotten about also? Um, a massive transit happening this week is on the 12th. A lot of astrologers have been talking about it. I picked up on it. I'm now sort of getting more into the planetary energies, which is why we're doing this astrological report. On the 12th, there's a transit that happens, you know, every 12 years or so, but it's happening in the sign of Pisces. And so that only happens about every 150, 160 years or so. And so it's Jupiter and Neptune. Jup anything Jupiter touches grows. 
we have conjunct energy, which is where it's like that Mars sort of energy of drive. So Mars, Jupiter, growth, expansion, the energy of luck, which is also Sag, is driving like Neptune. Neptune and Jupiter touch. And Neptune is all about our dreams, fantasy, and everything that's like very spiritual. Okay, so what does that mean? A lot of astrologers are saying that like it's like some sort of great awakening. That people are sort of like awakening to their spiritual journey. But I mean, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be that flavor of awakening too. It could just be like people are awakening to their purpose. They're feeling more connected to things than they have in a very long time. So because of that, even more so a reason to just let go of things and go with the flow. Because I feel like the energy right now is like things are showing up in your life. For a reason they're either showing you a mirror of something that you haven't yet integrated it's trying to guide you into into a direction that you shouldn't be resisting if you feel any resistance in your life right now look at that and sit with that because it's trying to tell you something um, and then again you know neptune this is all happening in the sign of pisces which is again a very spiritual sign um very romantic very um dreamy um so this is a great time to be aligning with your dreams aligning with the your your dreams like where your life examining your life where to the point where how much of it has been dictated by external forces versus your actual desires and how much are you allowing external forces to dictate the outcome of your life and again full moon libra the harmony that comes is when we release um, and, and just accept where we are right now and say that it's totally fine because the expectation, the external expectations don't have to rule over your feelings about where you are in your life and they certainly don't have to rule your decisions. Feelings are not how we make decisions. Feelings are there to guide us. So feelings this month have been frustration probably, right? Like, imagine the tension of a seed that peeks through the ground. Like, how much tension is held in that. And then it sort of just, like, explodes out. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, um, a couple more things before we get into the reading. With the energy last week of um, Mars and Saturn going conjunct, and this idea of like coming up against a roadblock and maybe that's where the feeling of frustration comes from is like a, the, the appearance of that like progress has not been made. And so we try even harder and then there's going to be even more roadblocks. If you've done the work and you've invested in, in, that, in that thing you're trying to do, trust that it will happen and release. Apply yourself to something different, something else, so that in that way you take pressure off of the thing that you've been working toward and you can let it come to you sort of more naturally. Um, what else we have then Mars entering Pisces, the side of Pisces this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did I write here? The luck of the luck of this transit will kick in and bring you what you desire. Commiserate with your efforts. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Luck will displace doubt. If you release anger, frustration, and go with the flow. Yeah, so actually that Mars in Pisces that's happening on the 14th, that's the energy of like finally releasing. And you know, the thing is it happens right before the full moon Libra. So whether you've been aware of this energy or just like feeling like you're up against the wall and just actively trying to like stay centered the past week or two or since the new moon, or if it comes to you as a last ditch effort, like right before the full moon, just expect it to happen. There will be this sort of release. And so you can just rest easy knowing that there will be um, that relief of tension. Okay, I think that concludes our astrological report. Let me know if you guys liked it, um, if you want more. I've been, let me just show you really quickly. I've been studying. I have all the time I'm saving from not doing daily readings. I've been studying. These are all the exact uh, conjunctions. For the year um you know it takes some time to learn and pick up on this stuff but i'm, I'm very excited about it so i'll just keep going and we'll see what happens we already had a card jump out 
the full moon in cancer a personal issue reaches resolution yeah so if you've been taking something personally it's about to be resolved i don't know if this is due to an external factor uh, by the way moon is in cancer right now so we're definitely if, if the, i think like we're protecting things that are important to us we're holding things close to us there is that level of tenderness that's coming in right and since cards want to jump out we'll just let them give me two more please no maybe not Conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. I got that card yesterday. By the way, the full moon eclipse is happening. And two, oh, two more came out. <clears throat> um, yeah, wow. It's time to release negativity. Like I said, a personal issue reaches resolution. Conclusions are within reach. So we got double conclusion. It's time to release negativity. What was I talking about this whole time? Releasing that negativity, the frustration, and your commitment is being tested. How badly do you want something? I feel like some of you guys want something really, really badly. And it's just not, you, there's nothing you can do to force it to happen. There's like nothing. Because if you've done the work, as in like set your intention, right? You have like a pure intention of like achieving something. And by pure, I mean like that doesn't harm anybody else, you know, a desire that you have. It's almost saying, the universe is saying, um, let it go. And then trust that the universe will just bring it in because that's what's, that's the energy of the planets. That's what's basically being told through the cards and through the energies of the planets right now. A personal issue reaches resolution. It's something y'all care a lot about. Something that's deeply personal. Look, the full moon eclipse is coming uh, May 15th, I'm pretty sure. May 15th. So definitely by then, I feel like there's been this message, and it, it appeared even in the new moon reading, of like this golden opportunity that's, that's coming. So... Um, Look, I'll apply this through the lens of my experience as a self-employed creative entrepreneur. Okay. There is an airy season. Everyone's coming. Everyone needs help. I'm happy to help. But if I say yes to all of every single opportunity, I'm not going to be available when for the golden opportunity when it comes. So my commitment is being tested. If I'm saying what I really want to be doing with my career is this... If I say yes to something that is not this, every time I do that, I'm giving away a piece of that commitment because I'm doing this other thing by the investment of my time into other things. So there's something to say about, you know, when we take everything that comes at us, we just say yes, 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 yes. When really we need to say, we need to be able to say no. And no is not a negative thing. It's more of a healthy boundary thing. Um, it's knowing when something is right for you or not. And you can still have love for people. You can still um, care about whether or not an individual gets the help that they need. Or whatever the case is. Whatever you're, however you're applying this to your situation, your, your metaphor, your personal metaphor. My point is that it's like a form of, of the commitment that you are intending to commit to is being tested. So are you willing to release something for it to come to you naturally? And then in the meantime, work on what's directly in front of you. I feel like there's a personal, see a personal issue reaches resolution. There might be something in front of you, directly in front of you that requires your attention that you can't see because you're so narrow-minded about the thing that you're trying to push forward that is a that is a block. You think that the block, that the resistance, is some is the thing that needs your attention. It's not. It's the thing you need to turn away from so that this can resolve itself. There's other things. Let's look at the peripheral of what's going on, a, a, a wider scope. The wider scope is also what's needed to receive this golden opportunity because we don't want to be so distracted and so narrow-minded that we're going to miss out on other things. 
Okay, let's get into uh, the tarot here. We'll do, we'll do my huge, huge spread. We're slowly breaking in these cards, y'all. This is the um, the Northern Animal Tarot. I love this deck so much. They're big cards, though, so I'm learning. We got Judgment underneath. That's a crossroads. That is a level of self-awareness. Okay. The Moth to the Flame. Uh, yeah. Like, this moth is on fire. Do you see him? He's, like, sort of sad. I don't know if he's sad, though. <laughs> um... The messages underneath again. Okay, Eight of Wands. Something happening very quickly here. We have Six of Cups, the Lovers, uh, the Four of Cups, the Moon, the Emperor, hey Aries, the Chariot, Ten of Swords, Ace of Swords, Death. Whoa! Okay, y'all. This is interesting. Right away I see Aries is dead center. Right? Hey, Aries season. We have the Ten of Swords and the Ace of Swords. So the end of a destructive cycle, right? Something mental, something um, cognitive, uh, or something about our nervous system, right? That's what the swords represent. And the Ace of Swords is in like this new beginning. It's the reset. So I'm getting here that there's like this massive release of doubt. And there's something more harmonious in the present moment about this emperor. It's almost like, so we got the lovers and the emperor. That's actually Gemini and Aries showing up here. Uh, maybe I'll make a list of all the signs that show up because maybe this is like who it's for or maybe you're dealing with these people. So the lovers is all about finding some sort of balance and harmony within ourselves, you know, and, A and Aries, the emperor, is about putting structure to the things that we want to grow. And also taking charge. This is sort of like a taking initiative card. Taking initiative around our own self-awareness, around knowing when sometimes we need to find the balance for ourselves. And then look at, we have double harmony here, again. It's a double six. Lovers is a six card. It's a lover's year. Six, six. So there's something... Um, the Six of Cups is also about harmony, but also um, nostalgia, sort of things appearing in the past. So um, we have here in the past position this nostalgia card, which is already referencing the past. We also have the Moon and the Ten of Swords. So this is almost about like a, a fear from the past is showing up to be finished. Something that we might look fondly back upon is actually no longer serving us it's a belief that doesn't work anymore this is this is the personal this is what the personal issue reaching resolution is really about about releasing some sort of past belief once we understand that we can provide you know the structure for ourselves the structure of our life through achieving um, balance for ourselves, being our own partner, sorry, sorry, being, this is, the lover's card isn't, I don't really see it as a love card. I mean, it could be, but it's also like the kind of harmony that it represents and the choice that it represents is like this choosing to stand on your own, or at least choosing to provide your own structure. That is the truth. I mean, I don't know another way to say it besides the way that it's showing up, but it's like at the end of the day, you only really have yourself. Um, and yes, relationships are awesome and they can enrich our lives, but they're not. A lot of us aren't fated to learn our lessons through relationship. There are lessons that occur through relationship, but those are lessons. They're not necessarily like destinies or, or whatever. They're more so like, uh, contracts, soul contracts. Oh, but then look at this. We have under, in the future position, we have, it's time to release negativity 
and look at this person, this Four of Cups, this is the card of apathy. So this person, I would say it does have like a, a little bit of a negative mind state if they're sitting here sort of rejecting what's trying to come for them. And what's coming for them is this Ace of Cups. So maybe it is about love. At least I'll say on the conscious level, uh, probably a lot of you guys or, you know, whoever's watching or the collective in general has love on the mind. I mean, there is like this renewal of springtime that does rejuvenate like our tenderness and maybe we want to be more with people, right? We're like shaking off all the stagnation and the static of, of wintertime. For some of us, it'll take longer. <laughs> you gotta, we gotta finish shaking off that negativity so that Ace of Cups can come for you. We have the Chariot as well in the future position. The Chariot is determination through sheer force of will. Traditionally, the Chariot is like this concrete chariot, as in, what does that mean? It's like, it's like a spiritual graduation. It's achieving something, but we're not physically going somewhere. I mean, you might be. But it's more of like the sort of graduation of, of spirit, um, understanding. Um, this is also Cancer. So we have full moon Cancer showing up and this is Cancer again. So, so far we have Gemini, Cancer, and Aries. Oh, and I can't forget about Scorpio. There's Scorpio here as well. Death. Death is showing up. Death is just change. And look how awesome this shows up. It's like the work of the subconscious... Um, if you've been doing meditating or dream work, um, you know, like try, keeping a dream journal, trying to write down your dreams, I feel like that was some instruction from like some previous video. It's subconsciously showing you how to end this destructive cycle and have a fresh start. Um, this is about clarity, about truth, and about removing doubt and some sort of like negative style of thinking. And death is just transformation. It's the death of ego, honestly. So look how beautiful that is, that it's showing us, like, in, in a quite very clear way that this is um, about a renewal. Renewing faith, renewing, um, you know, it's like dusting out the cobwebs of the mind or something. <clears throat> but first we have to deal with our fears. In the present moment, we have, there's like a self-awareness that's coming, judgment, the moon is representing um, the fears and things that are being pulled to the surface and reevaluating, does our life, again, reflect, the structure of our life, does it reflect something that we've, um, something based on our desires and what our truth is, based on what feels good and balanced to us, or is it based on some sort of external influence, or is it based on fear? Is it based on our childhood? Like whatever we picked up there. Yep. Your commitment is being tested. And, and judgment, the crossroads. Are you going to commit to this, um, the journey that, that it takes to, you know, the, <laughs> the trial by fire, if you will, if we're calling this Aries, right? The trial by fire of this renewal um, I think you should. I think we all should because there's important things here. And then, you know, once the seasons change again, we gotta, we gotta change with the seasons of what's being asked of us. So burn away some old stuff. I'd say, you know, you could write down, um, you know, your negative thoughts or feelings or just things or situations you no longer want to be a part of, like emotionally, energetically, just write them down and then go burn them. Um, I'll say this again, because uh, now that now I'm thinking about awareness, um, you know, the lesson of the four of cups is sort of like when we want to, it is sort of about protecting our, our emotions here a little bit. So do we have the awareness to understand when we, when we're at behaving this way, like a bit apathetic or unavailable, um, why we're doing this? I mean, it could be for a good reason. I don't want to, like, tell you what to do. Um, but at the same time, this is representative of the... Whoops, where are we? The Ace of Cups. So, 
this is supposed to be something that is inherently good for us, but yet we're not making ourselves available. We're not aware of the opportunity of this Ace of Cups. Because we're like, we've had these cups. My life isn't changed. Um, because we talked about awareness and just sort of like our peripherals, um, I feel like there is a message here about needing to be more aware, more present, um, and more just more open to that which wants to come in. All right, I think we'll leave it there, friends. Um, let me know if you liked the video. Prepare for the full moon in Libra coming this weekend, again, by working through your fears, releasing negativity, um, accepting where you are at at this point without forcing or, or feeling like you need to force something to happen because that which is meant for you will not pass you by, for sure. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.